don't know if you can hear me because the hood is loud as hell, but we have a few things on the agenda today and it's a Saturday, but you know, lab kind of runs my life and I'm kind of okay with it. It's a very unhealthy relationship. Anyway, um, I'll check in with you as I go. All right, I got my samples right here and now I'm on the way to the flow cytometry core. I'm now at the flow cytometry core. Um, I'm waiting for the cytometer to connect, but basically I am going to be running these little tubes of, oops, it's dripping water, <laughs> um, these little tubes of samples. They are cells that are fixed in ethanol, aka alcohol, and then we suspend it in a staining solution. So I am doing some most basic cell cycle analyses, which means that I'm staining them with a certain chemical that would show the amount of DNA content available in the cells. And usually when you look at a cell cycle progression, you can see that the DNA content multiplies and then drops back down. Um, so I'm just hoping to use that stain to figure out which cell cycle um, stage these cells are in and that gives me an idea of if my treatment is doing anything to the cell cycle and so I suspended them in a staining solution and then I washed them in a wash buffer and then I resuspended them in PBS which is just a saline solution to keep the cells from drying out and then what I will do is I will put them in here you see where the tube is I'll put them in there and then the machine will uptake the cells and they will sort them inside and then give us a value of like, oh, like this is how much it's in there. And you'll see in a second how that works. So before the analysis of all our tubes right here, we have to set up a global worksheet that helps us all the cells to separate them to sort them into various groups that they belong based on the markers that we're testing so the first one is the most basic ruling out cell debris um, because a lot of the cells when we go through the cytometers if they're incom um, incomplete i.e like they're breaking down and they're dying they tend to be much smaller and this is just a tentative shape but usually they will congregate that we will test the height and the width of the cells and we want to rule out any doublets or triplets and we only want single cells that usually gives us the most accurate count of the molecular marker carrying cells and then move on to the actual meat potato it's the pi staining um, program iodine and this is the cell cycle staining so roughly it will probably look at there's a peak right here a tiny valley and then a peak again and that corresponds to g1s and g2 i know it's really hard to say right now but let's carry on and i'll show you when i get an actual good peak adjusted some of the little shapes. Um, this is the most obvious peak because this is a uh, control, so we're not expecting any PI staining because I legit do not add any dye to it. So this is a good starting point for me to normalize the voltage. And when I run the actual samples, I'll be able to show the peaks and so But this is what it looks like.
Hello! Finally done with the work day over the weekend and just wanted to have a very very quick car chat to remind all of us, even myself, that working over the weekend is not a necessary thing to do or a rite of passage for your grad school or PhD career. I'm doing this today because I legit had cells waiting for me and I cannot prolong it even longer because that would just waste the cells. They'll just overgrow and they'll die. But yes, so please know that your health or like your personal time should take precedence over work because work is just work. If you're not well, your work's not gonna go well either. So I think work-life balance is not a topic that's often talked about in grad school because, you know, it's always about, oh, like publications or um, trying to make our experiments work. But a lot of times I think people just normalize trying to work as much as we can and trying to graduate as early as we can, which is valid. Like, I want to get out of here so bad. But at the same time, it's all about, well, my car is just doing its own thing. After all, it's just about us developing as a person um, above being a scientist. So... This is just my PSA of please pay attention to your work-life balance, set your priorities straight. If you need the time off, take the time off. The experiments will be here when we're back, but if you're not well, no one's going to be there to do the experiments. So that concludes my PSA. Now I'm going to go home and chill out. Sunday, I have some <laughs> steak that is cooking in the pan. I have been on a steak obsession streak lately, and so it's just got some Costco steak, nice and strong. Here I have some Sendun Ban coffee. So these are cold brew pots that are pretty popular in China, I believe. For those of you who don't know, I'm Chinese. So these are some cold brew pots that you can just dump into milk or water. You can make it iced, you can make it hot. So I'm gonna try it out today because I'm slightly lazy to use Benny over here. Um, so yeah, super excited. I got a big lab day today and gonna hang out with my postdoc. Um, so yeah, a very slow morning. Well, it's technically noon now, so...
Wednesday. At this point, you might as well just think that I'm permanently installed in this location of my apartment. Anyway, another morning working from home because I am in the process of waiting for my cells to grow up, not grow up, grow confluent, so I can have more cells ready for experiments. So in the meantime, I don't have a whole lot to do at lab because I'm just trying to conserve my energy for data collection for the paper that I will be writing at some point. Today, my priority will be to modify or review um, my review with my mentor. We just got comments back from the journal with the peer reviewers. Um, surprisingly to no one, one of the reviewers was extremely mean while the other was very, very supportive. I guess this is just something that you have to deal with in academic publishing. I'm not gonna dive into the examples because I'm still in the process of revising it and hopefully we'll publish it at some point in the near future. But it's just something interesting that I've observed because there is a phenomenon known as reviewer two. Like there is always someone that's extra mean for no reason whatsoever. So it's just part of the reason why I feel like academia might not be the best fit for me. It's just, I don't like dealing with people like that. I, it makes me feel horrible about myself. I guess it's a self-confidence issue, but it's just why spend all that energy to be mean to someone when you could just be collaborative and make something good out of team effort? Just a question. Anyway, so today it will just be incorporating some of the feedbacks from the other reviewer that was super helpful and supportive and sorting through the comments from the mean reviewer and see how we can respond because some of the comments are just entirely unnecessary and confusing. Um, so that will be my big, big to do today and probably will be planted here for another few hours. Then we'll probably get in a workout probably make some food and then get back into it. And also need to edit my video because uh, I just feel very overwhelmed. I'm not even uploading every single week and I already feel overwhelmed. So uh, anyway, catch you guys later. Peace. I also just put my real name on there. <laughs> so I just got my paper published. This is one of the two that I'm working on at the moment. And I am just so excited. It's finally out. And God, it was, it was a trip. <laughs> so I was um, doing informational interviews with some of the alumni in my network and one of them was a journal editor at BMC Medicine. And so because I was interested in a career as a journal editor, but I wasn't sure. So I just wanted to reach out to people, see their perspectives and then make the decision for myself. I connected with the person on LinkedIn and she shared that the journal was looking for people to write for them. And so I reached out to her. I'm just like, yo, can I try? Because I really want more publishing experience, you know, summarizing science, doing science communications, like just practicing the process of boiling down complex scientific ideas into digestible, blah, 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 digestible pieces. And she was like, sure, yeah, we can do this. But then, then the first issue came up, which was that I am Believe it or not, I am still pretty junior <laughs> for a researcher that publishes alone because I was a third year. I'm now a fourth year, but I was a third year PhD student at a time with only one publication under my name. So they were like, you're not senior enough. So we will like you to work with a postdoc from your lab um, or find someone else more senior to collaborate with, which I was like, Sure, you have no faith in me, but okay, I'll find someone. And so I found a postdoc in my lab. 
I was like, I believe this could be a very interesting learning experience for the both of us because our paper is on single nucleus RNA sequencing, which was very innovative in the field and it solves a lot of issues with um, what we are currently facing in the cancer therapeutics arena, which is that a lot of the samples if you were to dissect them or analyze them, they usually have a shelf life to them, like past a certain threshold. The current technologies might not be able to have an accurate read of what was actually going on in their molecular landscape or whatnot. So this new technique could potentially solve the problem and we can actually start using frozen archival tissues to do the analysis. And this could help so much pathologically and of course, therapeutically as well. Um, so I was telling my postdoc about it and she was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And so I forwarded her the paper that we'll be focusing on. But uh, unfortunately, she had to quit on me like last minute as I was starting to draft the uh, paper. And she <clears throat> basically said she had too much going on and she felt bad for committing <laughs> at the very beginning, which was understandable. But at that point I was like, ah, uh, shoot. Like, do I have to find someone else to collaborate with? Like I'm legit starting to write. And like, I have a pretty good idea of what I'm gonna talk about. And like, I have everything outlined and I just thought I needed additional input from the postdoc so we could actually publish together instead of just me writing everything. But now that she was out, I was like, if I recruited someone else at this point, I will probably still be writing the whole thing. So... So I reached out to my mentor. I was like, help me out here. What do I do? And she was like, do you want to write this alone? Um, because she was very supportive when I first came to her about this opportunity and she was like, just let me know if you need help. And I was like, I kind of want to just out of spite, um, just to show the people at the journal that yes, I am junior, but that doesn't mean that I cannot author something on my own and still have contribution to the field. And my PI was like, sure, let's do it. And she helped me revise a few renditions of the paper, um, but I did everything myself. I was in contact with the journal editor that I was working with the entire time. He was also very supportive. And although it was not ideal that I was, you know, a junior researcher in the field, they still ended up accepting my publication and after 40 something days of waiting it was finally out and this whole time it was just a lot of trial and error had to defy a lot of odds had many a hiccup but it was a very rewarding experience well a my immature ass wants to tell everyone that i am good enough for this like just watch out for me but b it was such a refreshing experience taking a paper of great significance to the field and adding my own commentary to the paper that, you know, were still validated enough that they were published. So it was a great um, signal to myself that I am developing great scientific thinking skills and it was just very, very, I was very happy about it. So now it's just onwards and upwards and try to get my second of two papers published. And then as all of this is going on, I have another paper that I'm starting to plan, um, starting to slowly fill up the data collection. I already have some data. I'm just trying to plan out the coherent story and then try to fill in the gaps. And hopefully this will be an incredibly productive year. And also, hopefully, this can help me get even closer to my eventual defense because I am itching to be done. Although it's like probably still a year and a half, but I'm itching to be done. <laughs>